the aerodynamic drag coefficient. Have you ever wondered what it is for your car? Have you ever been scientifically curious about whether or not you can measure it? But maybe if you've got a kit car or something you've built, maybe you'd like to know what. Well, follow me through and I'll show you an experimental method for how you can do it and how you can calculate it. Welcome back. If you want to learn how to uh, look after your own car, save yourself a, a bundle on uh, garage fees, then consider subscribing. There's a subscribe button down in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. For the experimental phase, you need a piece of flat straight road with good quality tarmac. You'll also need to choose a windless day. <laughs> no such thing exists here in the UK of course. Uh, so choose a day where the wind is very gentle uh, and is not at all gusty. The data that you're going to need to input into the uh, equation for uh, calculating your aerodynamic drag and your rolling resistance is the deceleration time between two sets of two speeds. To measure those speeds I'm using Torque Pro. Now if you haven't got Torque Pro and to be honest why not <laughs> use a GPS speedometer app and use the split screen function on your phone uh, to run your stopwatch along with a screen recorder such as DU recorder or, or an iOS equivalent that way you can record the data on your phone you can analyze the data later to get the timings between the speeds uh, without having to interact with your phone whilst you're doing the driving you also need to know the weight of your vehicle. If you can't get an accurate weight for your car, then use the manufacturer's figures. Another piece of information that you're going to need is the frontal area of your car. And try very hard to keep your car in a straight line and make no steering inputs. Do at least two runs between the two speeds, one run in each direction. Then take the average of those results and that will average out any effects of wind speed coming from a particular direction. As is always the case when you're talking about anything to do with physics, there is inevitably maths involved. So at this point, I'm going to get all uh, engineering explained on you, and out comes the whiteboard. Sorry, Jason, couldn't resist that. Actually, if you haven't in explored Engineering Explained's channel yet, do so. Brilliant. No one drives a whiteboard quite like Jason and few explain how a car works as well as he does either. The drag coefficient, CW, is six times the mass of the vehicle times the difference between A1 and A2 which are the two average decelerations between the target speeds divided by the frontal area of the car multiplied by the difference between the mean speeds squared. Frontal area can be calculated using 0.9 times the width of the car without mirrors times the height of the car. That will give you a very good close approximation. The coefficient of rolling resistance F is 28.2 multiplied by A2V1 squared minus A1V2 squared divided by 1000 times V1 squared minus V2 squared. V1 and V2 are the two average velocities which in this instance are 57 and a half and 12 and a half because we're going from 60 to 55 and 15 to 10. For the mass of your car in kilos, if you're in the UK, the MOT test includes a brake roller test and the brake roller actually weighs the car to calculate the braking efficiencies. So you can get your car weight from your last MOT. Assuming of course that the MOT station actually gave you a printout of the brake roller test results which they should have done. I'm actually going to do three runs in each direction. I'm not going to show you all six runs uh, that would make for a very boring video so here's the first run speed it up three times just so you get the idea and you can see what I'm doing. Accelerate to 60 k's allow the car to slow in neutral down to uh, about 50 k's then brake down to about 20 and allow the car to slow down naturally to 10 k's or just below 
and then uh, pull over and park. Now that I've done my six runs, I'm going to download the data from the graphs as a CSV and input that data into an Excel spreadsheet. Now for a quick run through on the results. The deceleration time number one from 60 to 55 was 5.87 yielding an average deceleration of 0.85. T2 from 15 down to 10 9.73 seconds yielding an average deceleration of 0.51. Mass of my car from MOT certificates 16.25 and you saw that I found a picture uh, from a catalogue showing the car's dimensions and those calculated out to an area of 2.31. So putting all that into these equations, I calculate a drag coefficient of 0 0.30. Now the Saab published figure is 0 0.28, which gives me a 7% error in comparison to the official figure. However, the official figure, you can bet your bottom dollar, was tested on a dry car, i.e. no fluids, no fuel in particular, and probably no fitted options. And they probably also tested it on a car with a lower trim level. After all, every OE wants to put out the best possible figures for drag coefficient, fuel economy, whatever it might be. So let's suppose for a moment that the car that Saab tested was a 1500 kilo car, which would be about right. If you take me and a tank of fuel off that, you end up with about 1500 kilos. That would give a result of 0.284 which is very close to the officially uh, designated figure. If we were to take the official curb weight of this car, which is 14.35 kilos, then I would have calculated 0.272, which again is fairly close, but a little low. So I don't think I've done too bad. This car has got a number of options on it that add to the weight of the car. It's also got different tyres compared to uh, the factory car, but I think that's good. 7% error, happy with that. The coefficient of rolling resistance are calculating at uh, 0.014. I've no official data to compare that with. Saab don't put, well, very few OEs actually publish the rolling resistance data, but it does fall within the generic data given in the Bosch Automotive Handbook. There's a picture of it up there for you. Uh, I'll include links in the description if anyone's mad enough to want to go and buy one. Now, the Bosch Automotive Handbook suggests 0.011 for a, a mid-sized saloon. Their data is rolling resistance of tyres doesn't say exactly what's included. Bearing in mind my data includes drag from the gearbox and the differential rotating in a, in a gearbox case full of oil, uh, brake drag and bearing drag which again from previous MOT certificates I know that brake drag is 13 kilogram force front wheels, 8 kilogram force rear wheels, that's per wheel by the way. So overall I'm very happy with that result. I think I've shown you a method that you could use quite easily to test a home built vehicle or you could use this method uh, to test any modifications you make to, to a vehicle if you've added any aerodynamic aids um, or maybe a track vehicle if, you, if you've got one. Um, if you don't know these dimensions the frontal area then okay you could make an estimate and you could use the official curb weight of the vehicle out of your handbook whilst they may not give you an absolutely accurate figure if you were testing modifications doing before and afters then the comparison would be valid you would at least be able to test to see if modifications you've made have made any improvement to the aerodynamics or the rolling resistance which might be important to you if you've got a track car or a race car. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was useful to you. See you next time.